What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So a while ago I had done a video on an extension called FFD which is a deformation plugin that allows you to take objects and kind of deform them into shapes that you want. I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that and uh, just kind of check out some of the applications of that extension. So before we get started I do want to take a second and thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon as you know is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube so if you like what I'm doing on this channel um, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video is basically, it, it's to give you an idea of the capabilities of a couple of these different extensions. Um, the final product is just going to be kind of a, a different shape, um, but you can use this and apply it to different things. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show you how to put them all together. I may even throw it into Enscape just to see how it looks. Um, it's always interesting to take something and throw it into a rendering after you've created the geometry. Just kind of see, you know, what, what comes of it. And uh, just sometimes it's just fun to kind of play around with some stuff. So so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw an arc. And in this case, I'm going to draw an arc and we want it to be pretty smooth. So we'll go ahead and call it a 48 sided arc. So all you do is you type in, you type A for the arc key and then you see down here in the corner it asks you for the number of sides. In this case I typed in 48 and hit the enter key. So that'll give us a really smooth arc. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll just call this a 10 foot long by we'll call it a four foot high arc it probably doesn't matter the actual dimensions of your arc now what I'm gonna do is if you remember in the past what I've done is I've kind of uh, offset these and then kind of drawn in a face in order to extrude this um, so that I have something to extrude to create this face well what I'm gonna do instead in this case is I'm gonna use an extension called extrusion tools and this extension just got updated for 2018 I want to make a video on it a little bit later um, but I'm really excited about it because what it does is it gives you the option of extruding edges without having to actually have faces in here so in this case we're going to go to extrude edges by vector we're gonna click on that and what that'll allow us to do is that'll allow us to click on this point and extrude along this point. So you can see how it's giving us this kind of filled in face. And I'll link to that extension in the notes below. That one's from TIG. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extrude this out about six inches. So you can see that allowed me to create this uh, extrusion shape, this kind of ribbon shape. So it's asking me if I want to reverse the faces. I'm going to say no. And it's going to ask if I want to explode the group. And I'm going to say no as well because we want to keep it in here as a group. And I'm going to go ahead and delete out my original line. So now what I have in here, if I look down in my outliner is I've just got this group and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an extension called FFD and uh, I will try to remember to link to the video I did on FFD a while ago it's basically an extension that allows you to kind of deform a shape using a grid and so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna go down to the FFD option so you're gonna right click on this object and then you're gonna go down to FFD and you can see how it gives you options for two by two, three by three, or n by n. So n by n allows you to set your own grid creation. So this will let you set it to more than just three pieces of a grid. In this case, we're gonna leave it on the three. Um, but I do wanna note that uh, when you do this, when you're working with a lot of different shapes, sometimes it's good to do this and to set the subdivide to true because what happens is, and I guess I'll just go off on a tangent for just a second, but if you have an object like, let's say you've got this post and then I do FFD and I do a three by three grid, well, if I go inside my FFD control points group and I move the grid around, it's not gonna do anything because this object isn't subdivided. So like if I take the top ones, it'll move the top geometry. But what happens is your object has to be subdivided into groups in order for this to work well. So if I was to take the same object and do FFD in by in and do the same thing, so we'll set it to three by three by three, but I set subdivide to true, you can see what that did is that divided up my object based on this grid. Well now, when I go inside my FFD control points and I move this around, my object actually is divided up in a way that it can actually move. 
So like if I was to take the scale tool and just scale this out, this would allow me to scale that like that. So subdividing your object can be really important if you want things to work properly with FFD. In this case, with an object like this, it actually doesn't matter. So because it's just kind of a flat ribbon shape, if I if I uh, create a grid and move the grid around, then uh, the object will work just fine. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, and one thing to note, because I actually ran into some problems with this when I was making this video, is when you're doing this, um, so I, I had originally done that example model over here, and then this one, well, what I started running into was my control points weren't working the same way. So somehow using FFD with one object and then the other object over here kind of messed this up. So sometimes what you may need to do, um, depending on what you're trying to do, if you run into some weird results, just make sure you haven't done a bunch of different shapes with FFD at once. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select this object that I created. I'm going to do an FFD and I'm going to do a 3x3. Three three. And then like I said before, you're just going to double click on these control points and then you're just going to drag across here and I'm just going to rotate this from this point to this point. And this is something you could probably also do with uh, Fredo Scale's rotation tool. But then the other thing that you probably can't do is you can't then adjust the height. You can see how I can kind of adjust the curve of this object by moving around these center pieces. So if I wanted, or this center piece of the FFD object, because basically what it's doing is it's associating these points with the center point of this ribbon. And so what I can do is I can use this to kind of adjust my curve a little bit. And if I wanted it to go further out, I could move it along the green axis. Or if I wanted it to be closest, I could move it closer. I could move it the other way. So there's a lot of different things you can do to adjust this. And I'm kind of undoing it back to my original curve that I had created. So I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to create this curve by rotating this 90 degrees. So you can see what this is doing is this is taking this and it's basically creating kind of a smooth curve along these points. And so I'm actually gonna leave it like that for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and delete out my FFD control points and I'm gonna delete out my original curve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this object and I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna make it a component. And in this case, I'm just gonna leave it called component one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rotate it 30 degrees. So I'm going to use the rotate tool and you can lock that to the blue axis by tapping the up key on your keyboard. I'm just going to click on this corner, click again, tap the control key in order to turn on copy mode and I'm going to type in 30 degrees and then I'm going to type in times 11. And so when I create 11 copies of this, what that's going to do is that's going to create 11 copies of this equally spaced at 30 degrees each. And so now I've got all these different parts and pieces in here. Well, now what I want to do is I want to give this a little bit of depth. And so if you remember, SketchUp by default doesn't allow you to push pull surfaces like this because they're curved surfaces. So if I try to use the push pull tool and I come in here, it's going to tell me it's not going to work because you can't push pull curved or smooth surfaces. But what you can do, and before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and save my model. So now that I saved my model, which it's always a good idea to do that when you're dealing with geometry like this, when it's not like, well, it's always a good idea to save your model, but um, it's really a good idea to save it when you're dealing with uh, anything that has more faces and complex shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use joint push pull, which is another extension that I'll link to in the notes down below. We're just going to use this first object, which is push pull or thicken a surface. And what that'll do when I turn that on, that's got a bunch of these different menu options in here. But what that'll do is that'll allow me to click and drag drag and give this a thickness. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a thickness and you can see what happens when I do that is not only does this first piece get thickness, the rest of them do too because they're components. And so what that gives us is that gives us this cool kind of spiraling shape and it all kind of comes to a point down here. And um, for those of you that are going to ask me, because I know you will right now, it is not 3D printable um, because this isn't in here as a solid. You'd have to come in here and do a fair amount of cleanup in order to make this 3D printable. I'm not sure exactly what the best way to do that is, to be honest with you. Um, but what I'm going to do now is there's a few different ways you could go with this. You could take this object. First of all, you could just leave it as is. I mean, it's a pretty cool shape and it gives you kind of an idea of the capabilities of FFD. Um, or you could select all of these and you could make them a group or you could make them a component. 
So we'll just call this component two for right now. And what you could do is you could make a copy of it. So I'm gonna make a copy straight up and down. And then I'm gonna use the scale tool to flip it in place. So just activate the scale tool by tapping the S key and then click on this object. And if you hold on the control key, you can um, scale this about center. And then what I can do is I can take it and I can move it back up. So I can take this center point and move it back up so that it's touching the center point of this other object. And so what that does is gives you a really cool shape. And the first thought I had when I did something like this is, okay, this is a cool shape. It almost looks like a reflection in water. And so what I decided I wanted to do is I wanted to use the extension Inscape, which is a real-time rendering program that I'll link to in the notes below as well, um, to see if I could create this as kind of a water shape, as kind of a real-time rendering. And so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this object and I'm just gonna activate Inscape. And so I'm gonna click on this object and that's gonna load Inscape. And that's kind of popped up in my other window right now, but what that did is that pops up my real-time rendering of this object. And so you can see I can fly around this and it looks pretty cool. Um, you can see Inscape kind of adds clouds and you can use, you can adjust the time of day to adjust the lighting. But what we don't have in here is any decent materials and we also don't have water in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'll close Inscape for right now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this object. And then what I wanna do is let's say I'm going to use the rectangle tool because what we wanna do is we wanna create a face for some water. And so I'm gonna use the rectangle tool and if you remember in the new version of SketchUp in 2018, you can do this about center. So you see down in the corner it says control equals select center. So I'm just gonna tap the control key. That'll allow me to create a rectangle starting from the center. Um, and if you have an older version, you can still do this, you just need to draw um, kind of more the perimeter of this object. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a box that's just a little bit wider than my object so that I have a face in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and reverse that face. And so right now we still don't have any materials in here. So if I bring up Inscape again, right now I've got that object hidden and I don't have any materials in here, so this just kind of looks like a random face with kind of a sculpture on top of it. Well, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a couple materials. And so I'm gonna pull Inscape off to the side and I'll pull it back in here in a minute. But I'm gonna save my model first. It's always a good idea to do that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a couple different materials to my model. So in this case, I'm going to apply a water material. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll pull the water dark blue object out of here. And so what happened when I applied that dark blue water object is Inscape applied water all the way around this. So you can see how it's taking this and it's actually giving me a reflection like this is actually in water. So that's pretty cool. That's kind of getting us where we want to go. It's even got this reflection down here. And so probably what I would do now is I would take a material like Let's try, so I'm just gonna select this and let's try a material like, we'll give it kind of a brush stainless metal look for right now. And so now what I have in Inscape is I have kind of a stainless metal in here and I may kind of shrink the size of the texture on here, but you can see how that's giving me kind of a, a uh, reflection off of this object. So there's probably a few other things I could do with this as well. Um, I could probably unhide the lower part of this and so that it shows up on the underside in here, but I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. I mean, the whole point of this video is to give you kind of an idea of the capabilities of FFD, and then just kind of to play around with the rendering a little bit. So leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. I'd love to hear your opinion on FFD, uh, some things you could do with it, if you have any ideas for how you could use it. Um, I'd love to make some more tutorials on that if you guys are interested. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.